Hey everyone, it's Miss Lexi. I'm here for second grade math review number two. We're going to go through a few more different problems on different second grade math skills that you've been taught this year. All right, so let's look at the first few. For number one, or for the first one, it says, what is the sum? So sum, remember, means we're adding. So we're going to add 327 plus 145. So we start with our ones place. So we have 7 plus 5. And 7 plus 5 equals 12. So we put our 2 in our ones place and we carry our 110 over to our tens column. Now we have 1 plus 2 plus 4 in our tens column. And 1 plus 2 is 3. And 3 plus 4 is 7. So we have 7 tens. And then we have to add our hundreds. So we have 3 plus 1, which equals 4. So our sum is 472. The next one, what is another way to write the time half past 7? So if it's half past an hour, that means it's still that hour. So we know it's going to be 7 something. And if we're half past, that means we're half an hour past. And a half an hour means it's 7.30. All right. And the next one says, Molly has th these coins in her pocket. How much money does she have in her pocket? So let's label what how much each coin is worth. They've already put them in order. So we have 25 cents for our first quarter. Then we have another quarter that's 25 cents. Then we have a dime, which is 10. Another dime, which is 10. And then a nickel, which is 5 cents. So if I'm counting this change, I would say 25 50, 60, 70, 75 cents, okay? So we would say that 75 cents, and sometimes you might see it as 75 cents with a cent symbol after, but if we're going to use our dollar sign, we're going to put our dollar sign first. We're going to say we have zero dollars and is our decimal point 75 Cents. So those are actually three different ways that you can write 75 cents. Okay, let's look at some more. All right, it says Jeremy has 58 baseball cards. He gives 23 of them to his sister. How many baseball cards does Jeremy have left? So we know that 58, 23, and how many ha he has left are important information in that problem. And if we know, want to know how many he has left, that means that we're going to be subtracting. And that's what they set up the problem to be. So we have 58 minus 23. So we start in our ones place. 8 plus 3, or subtract 3, sorry. 8 minus 3, which equals 5. Then we have 5 minus 2. So we have to make sure that we're watching that sign. It's really important. So 5 minus 2 equals 3. So how many baseball cards does Jeremy have left? He has 35 baseball cards. And they already put baseball cards as the label for that number. So we know what we're talking about in this word problem. The next one, what is the sum of 14 plus 65? I don't like to n add numbers horizontally when they're this big. So I'm going to rewrite it off to the side. And I'm going to put 14 plus 65, making sure that I have my place values lined up. So I add my 1s first, 4 plus 5, which equals 9. Then I add my 10s, 1 plus 6, which equals 7. So my answer, or my sum, is 79. So I'm going to fill that in on my line. All right. So the next one, Adrian has a cube train that is 13 inches long. He adds 6 inches of cubes to the train. How long is the cube train now? So we had 13, and then he added 6, so we have to do 13 plus 6. And again, I'm going to rewrite this so that it's vertically and my place values are lined up. So 3 plus 6 is 9, and then 1 plus nothing, or we can pretend that there's a 0 here. So 1 plus 0 is still 1. So he his train is now 19 inches long. All right, what is the val like, total value of this group of coins? So let's label them. Our first one's a dime, so that's 10 cents. Then we have a nickel, which is 5 cents. Then two pennies, which are each 1 cent. So if I'm counting, I say 10, 15. Then I count by 1, 16, 17. So this would be 17 cents. And again, if we write it 
with a cent sign, it would look like 17 with a cents after. Or we can write it with our dollar sign, saying that we have zero dollars and our decimal point, 17 cents. Okay? All right. And just a couple more that we're going to look at. So the first one says, what is the time on this clock? So if we look at this, we want to first look at our shorthand. That's our hour hand. So when I look at my hour hand, it is pointing right past the four. So when we're looking at for the hour on a clock, we always have to go back. It's like a hook. It hooks back to the hour that it's already passed because we're not to five yet. So we know that our hour is four something. Now we have to look at our long hand, which is our minute hand. And when we look at it, it's pointing on the one. When, and it is really pointing at the large dash mark that is at the one. And there, that dash mark means that it has passed five minutes past four o'clock. That means that we would write that as 4.05 or 4.05, which is five minutes past four. All right. The next one says, what is the total value of this group of coins? So again, let's label them. Our first is a dime, so it's 10 cents. Then we have a nickel, which is five. Another nickel, which is five cents. And then a penny, which is one cent. Okay? So when we're counting these coins, we want to start with our 10. That's 10 cents. When we add five, we're now at 15 cents. We add another five, we're at 20 cents. And we add one more, which is 21 cents. And if we write that with a cent symbol, we would write 21 with a cent symbol afterwards. Or we can write it as dollars and cents. So they have the dollar sign out front already for us. So we know that we have zero dollars and our decimal point, 21 cents. Okay. Then the last one, it says use the line plot. How many pencils are five inches long? So it says the length of pencils in inches, we're going to find our five, and above the five there are two X's. That means there are two pencils that are length five inches. So those are just a few more examples of some math skills that you've learned this year. This helps, and keep looking out for some other videos to help you as well. See ya!